entire manning the Guizhong Ballista. Do not let the Fatui disturb their work. All able Millilith, with me! Let's go help you! We Adepti have not faced a god in several millennia. Let one see what you're made of then. What strength remains within you, one wishes to witness. Motion to compel. Osile's divine power. I am. I am familiar with it. Be careful not to get hit. The Fatui! Their attacks are unrelenting! <sighs> How daring. Snezhnaya's diplomats will answer for this afterward. Every last one. and spirit. Uh, perhaps you can withstand three forms of adeptal energy at once. This will hurt a little. Please bear with us. Once you've adapted, try to use them in battle. Exercise caution! 
destruction. I fear that the god's power has reached its peak. In other words, if we hold here, there's nothing worse to come, right? Careful now. The Guizhong Ballista is destroyed. Huh? Without its covering fire, retaliation shall be difficult. But the Jade Chamber is our last line of defense. We can't give another inch, no matter what. I have another idea. Uh, what do you mean, Lady Ningguang? I'll sacrifice the Jade Chamber. What is the meaning of this? I understand. Traveler, lend me a hand. Farewell, old friend. Goodbye for now. Let us meet again in the future. Is it... finally over? The ominous aura of that monster has indeed begun to fade. The effects of the Sigil of Permission last but a short time. It will be some time before the Overlord of the Vortex can make any waves again. We are indebted to you for your assistance. 
If the Adepti hadn't happened to be here, the future of Liyua Harbor would surely have been in great jeopardy. Save your flattery. We didn't just happen to be here. Surely you won't pretend to have forgotten the reason for which we came. Come now. There's no need for such harsh words, Cloud Retainer. I've heard that when Ningguang began learning to do business, she had already started setting aside part of her then-limited income in preparation for building the Jade Chamber. At first, it was only the size of a small room, but with continued expansion, it has become the palace that lies before you now. It is a testament to Ningguang's entire life, both as a businesswoman and as the backbone of the Liu Qixing. Seeing the Jade Chamber destroyed in the defense of Liu means much to her. To me, such cooperation and sacrifice deserves at least some recognition, don't you agree? Well, I was really hoping you would say that such sacrifice could at least be used as some leverage in our negotiations. <laughs> Thank you all for hearing me out. We know very well why the Adepti came here today. But please forgive us. We cannot yield to your wishes. Oh? 3,700 years. According to our records, the Adepti signed a contract with Rex Lapis to protect Liyue 3,700 years ago. Even to this very day, Liyue and its lands have stood the test of time, immovable as stone, just as it was thousands of years before. This is truly no small feat. But that does not mean that the Liyue of today is the same city as it was all those years ago. Do not merely cast your protective gaze upon the land. Instead, focus your sights on our city and each of the citizens that dwell within it. Are you questioning our means of protecting Liyue? Hmm. I mean no offense. I simply hope that our Adepti forebearers would see Liyue in a new light. Ha! <laughs> forebearers, you say? One doubts you would be fit to be part of such a lineage. This morning, Rex Lapis appeared to me in a dream. What? In the dream, I yearn to tell him that we Chi Sing, though mortal, are equally bound to the contract. Each passing generation of the Qi Sing leaves many things of value to be inherited by the next generation. I also thought to tell him how the past generations of Qi Sing had strove under his rule to survive in our mortal world, establishing a network of contracts which has since come to be known as trade. But I dared not speak. I could only gaze at him in silence until the moment I awoke. Oh, Ningguang! Yet another perspective. What are you trying to say, Outlander? Right! That's something that happened in Mondstadt. It's a story about the Four Winds and the people of the Animal Archon. The Animal Archon sought to quell the strife between the two sides, because he believed that such conflict would only scar the hearts of both, and that nothing good would come of it. Each of the Seven Nations has its own scars from the past. Though your point is the very height of simplicity. As Adepti, we've become a laughingstock to be chastised thus by an outlander who has lent us such succor. All right, all right. Didn't Ningguang suggest that we should focus on the city and each of its citizens? I know I already have, so why not see for yourselves? I apologize for appearing in full armor. I am afraid I cannot show the proper courtesies. And who are you? I am Feng Yan, a sergeant of the Millilith. I have come to extend my thanks to the Adepti. I thought this battle would perhaps be my last. But thanks to the aid of the Adepti, our forces were not as badly battered as I feared we might be. Although I am a mere mortal soldier, I promise to hold the line and never betray the grace given to us by the Illuminated Adepti this day. Hmm. Hmm. Huh? 
Why does everyone look so down? Didn't we just beat that big monster? <laughs> Weren't you frightened, dear? It was quite the predicament. I wasn't afraid. All the strong Millilith guards were there, and those powerful heroes with their visions were there. Everyone was there. When danger is near, everyone always protects me. And the rest of the time, they make fun toys and tasty snacks and, and loads of things that make the harbor so pretty. Thanks for protecting Liyue Harbor. Please come visit us for the next lantern ride. Unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to participate. Huh? Because we are Adepti. Okay. It must be hard being an Adeptus. Aww. You see, this is what Liyue is like today. The country of contracts is grateful to the Adepti for their protection, but it is no longer necessary for the city to rely on the Adepti's power to solve every little niggling matter. Although their blood is weak, there is still strength to be found in those we call mortals. The time of contracts between gods and Liyue has long since passed. Now is the time of contracts between Liyue and its people. Hmm. Seeing the port around us now, it is hard not to feel a bit out of place. Wouldn't you say so, Cloud Retainer? Your line of inquiry is askew. One did not spearhead this expedition to Liyue Harbor. Hmm. Seems like the Adepti have had a change of heart. Let us return now. Eager to leave, conqueror of demons. <laughs> yes, one understands what the conqueror of demons means. The city of Liyue has changed much after our long separation. One fears that by the time one finally grasps the new contracts of Liyue, you humans would have once again changed the place beyond recognition. Fair enough. Away we shall, and return whence we came. <sighs> Since we Adepti have consensus, then one shall persist no further. But how will we ensure that the Liyue Chising will not simply exploit their power once we depart? In my view, that is still a thing to be guarded against. <laughs> All right, Mooncarver, you needn't worry. It seems to me that this right of supervision is best left to the people of Liyue. <sighs> Looks like the conflict between humans and Adepti was avoided. All swell it ends well, huh? Oh, right! It's nice that we've got peace and all, but we're forgetting one thing. Child wanted to unleash the god so he could lure Rex Lapis out. But we were able to handle the overlord of the Vortex on our own, so Rex Lapis never showed up. Oh, and speaking of that, don't we still need to get to the bottom of that Archon's death, too? doesn't get it. But isn't the strongest lead we have the Adeptilus Rite of Parting that we're organizing? No idea where Yang Li's gone. Let's ask for him at Wangsham Funeral Parlor. in mind. Huh. Body in mind. Time to act.
Is there anything I can do for you two? I'm afraid that- We've come to see Zhang Li. Could you please tell him we're here? Unfortunately, Zhang Li isn't here at the moment. It seems he went to Northland Bank. Doesn't the Northland Bank belong to the Fatui? Last time we saw Zhang Li was before we went to the Golden House. Do you think he doesn't know about the attack on Liyue? Visiting the Fatui at a time like this could only mean more trouble. We had better go and make sure that everything is okay. Body and mind. to act. You call this cooperation between Harbingers? Cooperation involves communication, you know. <laughs> Don't take it to heart, child. Besides, aren't you happy that you got to skip the formalities and bring chaos to the land? I'm sure you must have enjoyed that. Oh, it seems that some of your friends have arrived. Hey, it's Zhang Li and Child. And you. <laughs> it's you two. I believe we've met once before. In the city of Bards, was it? I'm glad you still remember my name. Ah, right. I imagine that it must have been rather hard to forget watching helplessly as something precious was snatched- No, don't let her get to you! You've yet to gather the powers of all seven elements, and our last battle at the Golden House was almost more than you could handle. So it might be best to keep things peaceful this time, see- Well, if it isn't you two, this is our first time seeing each other since Liyue was nearly wiped off the map. This is cer- Hmm. Paimon knew that we should never have trusted a Fatui Harbinger. Oh, now don't say that. Sure, I may have misled you, but I never had anything against you personally. Besides, I thought we were getting along quite well together, didn't you? Except nothing personal. We just have different views, that's all. Of course, the real deceivers here are Senora and Zhang Li. Curse them for leading me on. So actually, I think... Stop wasting time, child. There'll be plenty of time to chat once I'm through here. You remember the agreement, Morax. Now, if you would be so kind. The Gnosis, please. What in the world are you talking about? <sighs> The contract is fulfilled. That... <sighs> How sanctimonious. What? So you're the Lord of Chiyo? No, wait! That's an exciting twist and all, but... Why give the Gnosis to the Fatui? I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract. For it is a matter solely between the Tsaritsa and I. Yeah, you don't think you went a little bit too far with that whole fake death thing? Everyone was preparing the ceremony for you and splat! This big dragon falls out of the sky and all of Lyric goes into an uproar! Talk about a disaster. <laughs> Gathering all the forces that had been bubbling behind the scenes, and then stirring them together in a pot that was bound to boil over. That's what he wanted to see, am I right? Wait, what? Perhaps it's best that I explain. As you know, I've dwelt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. 
It is now 3,700 years ago that I founded Liu together with the Adepti. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. I can until one drizzly day. As I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers, You finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself, Have I already finished my duties? Oh, Zhang Li! But as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role, I soon discovered that many reasons still remain to not hastily depart. Was Liyue the city I had dwelt in for so long? So I feigned my own death, and gathered the caste of Child, the Adepti, and the Liyue Chising to play their roles together on the stage that was Liyue. That's right. Which is why I continued to safeguard the Gnosis until... So you mean that if the Chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to... Of course. And it would have been all too easy for him, too. Just as a child quickly matures after losing their parents, so... In the end... The resolution to all that has transpired was even more satisfactory than I could have hoped for. Take the Adepti, for instance. Owing to their years of seclusion, they were the least informed. Yet when faced with a crisis, they commendably showed the greatest amount of restraint possible. Not only did they manage to cooperate with the Chising, but in the end, they even made efforts to under- Credit is also due to Signora. The emissary dispatched by the Cryo Archon to fulfill our contract. At my request, she kept everything she knew in strict confidence. This despite the eavesdropping ears of her colleague, Child. This meant I could remain as Zhongli, even having the chance to fulfill the age-old traditions of Liu in this mortal form. All of these things turned out as I had planned. There is only one thing that I had not anticipated. And that w I had expected them to do no more than the Adepti, to come to the defense of Liu. They seize the opportunity to supplant Liu as divine protectors. Huh? That doesn't sound good at all! <laughs> On the contrary, I think it is excellent. I had always feared that it was too soon for them to take over from me. And it was also th Hey! What about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You've practically kept me in the dark! <laughs> I think that thanks would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. Wreaking havoc and turning the city upside down. The Lord of Geo ought to thank you for your performance, if any- If you hadn't created the pressure of a battle between mortals, a Depti, and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geo Archon, Liu would never have been able to become a dazzling diamond of a city. Huh? Just whose side are you on, mocking me like that? Are you itching for a fight? Hey, haven't you learned the Liu is saying, don't always call it as you see it? <laughs> well then, with the Gnosis in my possession, I have no use for such idle chatter. We should return to Zapolyarni Palace and seek an audience with Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa. Come, child. Ah, fine. I'll meet you there later. I'm not sharing a boat with the likes of you. <laughs> Do as you wish. Now then, is there anything else you wish to ask me? Zhongli always told us a good trade is a fair trade. Paimon has no idea what could be a good trade for a Gnosis. Realistically speaking... Huh? However, I am the god of contracts. For thousands of years, I have made countless contracts. If the deal was of no benefit, then I certainly would not be inclined to agree to it. 
My agreement with the Cryo Archon will be the last of my contracts as the Geo Archon. My contract to end all contracts. As for the bargaining chip that the Tsaritsa used to balance the scales, uncover that answer for yourself in your future journeys. Today's the day of the Rite of Parting. Although the star of the show is fake, we spent so much time trying to organize it, it would be a real shame not to go there now. Well, since we're going through with this rite of parting... Uh, so Rex Lapis is really... <sighs> oh, come on. Do you think that the assassin could have been a normal person? You know what I think. I don't think any of the gossip on the streets you hear from those shady types is worth anything. There's only one real possibility in my mind. I've heard that the assassin was that Fatui fellow. The Fatui? Hmm. They certainly are very suspicious. Who knows what those greedy, crooked folks... Shh! Lower your vo- You know that god from the ocean couldn't have just shown up out of nowhere. I mean, it's been 2,000 years since Rex Lapis subdued it. Yes, and to think that this happened right on the heels of the incident with Rex Lapis, too. Say... Do you think the person who assassinated our lord and released that evil god might have been one and the same? Now that you mention it, that's very possible. Yes, it's very possible indeed. I mean, it all fits together. That person must have colluded with the evil god to harm Rex Lapis. Oh, that wicked, black-hearted scoundrel. Still, what sort of supernatural prowess must this person be- Ah, forget it. Guessing's no use to us. Look, the Millilith over there looks like he's about to make an announcement. Hear ye all! The Chi Sing's words. Though a dragon soars ageless as the mountains, it too must return to dust. This is common knowledge. Gods and adepti live glorious lives. Rumors and hearsay abound on the streets that, having been thwarted in his trial, Rex Lapis's soul has recouped the celestial heights. Nor are they to believe street-born rumors or indulge in baseless speculation. Translation on what the Chi Sing's announcement said. <sighs> so that's how they're spinning it. Something feels off. Why would they suddenly give up looking for the murderer? Not to mention how this excuse sounds like something they just made up on the spot. Could the Chi Sing already have... Hmm... Did Zhang Li tell them in secret after his Gnosis changed hands? Exactly, right? Ooh, seems like the Rite of Parting has been going on for a while now. Let's go have a look. Look, it's 
Ning Guang and Ke Ching. Are they saying something? Are they... As said previously, Rex Lapis's soul returning to the heavens is the end of the contract. And it is also the end of an era. 3,700 years of contracts burnt and reduced to ash. We, the people of Liyue, were indeed prosperous. But blinded by our prosperity, we forgot that time can be pitiless. The long, unending dream of our Archon walking among us. Hmm. Now that we have awoken from our dream, we must learn to say farewell. Will you stand with us as we reestablish our contracts? So concludes the words of Her Eminence the Tianquan. Does Her Eminence the Yuhang have anything to add? Huh? Is she looking this way? Traveler. Yikes! She really is looking our way! Is that the Traveler who they say defeated the ancient god? So young! The Liyue Qixing always repay their debts. And as you have heard, our eyes see far and our reach is long. Name your price. You deserve that much. Whoa! Well, could you help me put up some missing person posters? to think I'd put my best perfume on before coming here, but it's... well, that's... Uh... hmm... Now perhaps mementos for Rex Lapis might be the best... As for the mortals... Hey, Zhongli! Look at this! Everyone in Liu is caught up in their emotions, thinking that they'll never see Rex Lapis again! And here you are looking all relaxed! <laughs> Why would I not feel more at ease after laying down the burden I have borne for 3,700 years? Right. If the two of you can spare the time, I should treat you to a meal at the Shinya kiosk. Ha! <laughs> that sounds like big talk, Zhongli. Paimon might have believed you if you were treating us to some third-round knockout. But you'd have to pay out your nose just to stand inside Shinyue Kiosk. Are you sure you can afford it? Hmm... You're right. <laughs> I do like the Mora. But why would Morax lack more? As the Rex Lapis Morax, I can easily create Mora. But since when I was journeying with you, though I still had the Gnosis in hand, I knew that I must soon retire from my role as an Archon. Oh, no wonder! Paimon gets it, but since you weren't you- Well, we were only spending- In the City of Commerce, we do not merely exchange money or goods. The Archon Morax could never experience life as the true mortal Zhongli could. No ma- <laughs> I must thank you for that. I will treasure the memories that I made as Zhongli. That is true. 
But there is no journey that does not end. No hmm. Paimon thinks that we should make a move and continue our search for- I fear that continuing your journey may be difficult. The Nick, the Electro Archon Ball. And just as the people of Liyue preferred to call me Rex Lapis, she too goes by another name among locals in Inna- Um, Paimon thinks we've heard that one before. That is the case. And since Raiden is also the Shogun of Inazuma, people call her the Raiden- That said, though people at the wharf were saying that the situation in Inazuma is very tense, Paimon doesn't remember that always being the case. Zhongli, since you're Rex Lapis, shouldn't you know something about what's happening there? Just how did Inazuma become a closed nation? It's because of visions. Visions? When faced with circumstances beyond their control, humans often bemoan their lack of power. But if a person shows truth, this is what visions are. Uh-huh. That's how... But starting from last year, the right... Vision hunt decree? Yes. It was an order to seize all visions within Inazuma's borders. They want to seize visions? But why? Are... I should think that in the Raiden Shogun's eyes, it is precisely because they are divine... Whoa. That's harsh. The Animo Archon is the god of freedom and the Geo Archon is the god of contracts. For her part, the Raiden Shogun is the god of eternity. It seems as though she has finally decided to eliminate any unstable elements that could... The fact that even I, the oldest of the seven, have now, knowing her, she must have again... Seven ideals for seven... All right then, was there anything else you wished to know? Well then, I suppose.
Traveler, please, over here. It has been a while since you joined the Adventurer's Guild. Are your adventures going smoothly? Hmm, is that so? Apart from your own skills, reliable teammates are also indispensable when adventuring. Another person to count on is always good after all. Yep, and it's even harder to get a- Ah, yes. Let me consult our records. Ah, there it is. There's been a certain blonde stranger who arrived in Mondstadt late- Blonde. Dress is all funny. It feels like Paimon's hurt- Wait, do you mean- Does that stranger's face look anything like his? Hmm? Like the honorary knights? No, they couldn't look more different. Seriously? <laughs> that stranger declined the guild's invitation, so I can't say that I know anything about the relationship between him and Mr. Kaya. Nonetheless, you can look for him if you're interested. After all, and should the stranger be a strong adventurer indeed, he would certainly be a big help on your journey. Please don't talk down on yourself like that. Your deeds are the stuff of song for all the bards and- Well, as to- He stands guard at the sea. I wish you every si- Add Astra- Add Astra at Haven't you heard? 